All right, so here we are. It's uh, as I'm recording this. It's the middle of the, middle of the holiday season. Although this is going to come out um, after the holiday season is over, but there's always the debate about what works on Amazon, what doesn't work on Amazon, what gets you sales, what what doesn't necessarily work anymore because the tactics seems like are constantly changing. That's why I'm super excited to have with me here today. Um, someone who has quite a bit of experience. Not only he has uh, sold on Amazon in the past, but he works with clients in his agency. Um, and collectively, they do over eight figures of revenue. So he gets to see what works and what doesn't work with some, uh, some pretty big clients. So super excited to have with me here today, um, the owner of Turnkey Product Management, uh, as well as the host of the Playbook for Amazon podcast, Jeff Lieber. Super excited to have you here today, Jeff. Yeah, thank you for having me, Kevin. Really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I love your podcast as well. So glad we're here chatting. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Yeah, we, uh, we had uh, reached out um, a, a week or two ago. We're just chatting. We're like, you know, um, sometimes when you just start chatting with someone and realize like, okay, it's fun when you get to talk shop that, you know, maybe we should uh, press record and uh, talk shop with uh, let other people benefit from our conversation here. So you're a, you're a wealth of knowledge. And I know, I know that uh, it'll be very helpful for those uh, viewing and listening. So just to start off, tell us a little bit how you got into the whole e-commerce world. Yeah, so I got into it around 2014. Um, I was working just a normal job out of college doing mm -hmm. like healthcare consulting, but then um, did that for about four and a half years, but then just always had sort of that marketing entrepreneurial niche, was always studying the stuff, but never really took, took action on it or enough action to like see results. It's kind of similar in some ways to your story as well. Cause I know, uh -huh. you, you know, you had the, the eBay and the golf club stuff and, you know, but then, you know, you eventually took that big leap. And so, right. Um, I have a fairly similar story in that, in that regard. And, uh, yeah. So then I ended up just learning that, you know, about this Amazon opportunity that everyone started talking about and started just learning, you know, what the strategies are and it just made a whole lot of sense. And so, um, you know, out of all the products in the world, I had a big spreadsheet of over 30 products to consider, you mm -hmm. know, test, testing out launching. And uh, the sexiest, coolest product I could pick was uh, puppy training pee pads that your dog can pee on any time that they want. So uh, that nice. was that was the, pro the first product. I have no idea why I picked that one, but uh, decided to buy, uh, my supplier said that the MOQ, the minimum order quantity was a 20 foot container. Oh my um, gosh, how many, how many pee pads is that? Higher than I can count. And <laughs> so I was like, well, you know, there, I was like, I really like this product because it's a recurring repeat pot product. And I was kind of right. set on that. And I was like, you know what, I'm just going to go all in. So, you know, I wouldn't recommend this to anybody, but I bought a 20 foot container as my first test order. Uh, wired like my life savings to China. I wasn't even sure if they would even ship me anything. I thought 50% chance they're just going to scam me out of my money. And uh, yeah, but we were off to the races and it took me a long time to sell through those. It took about a year. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, that's crazy. That's, that's yeah. some guts there. Because I mean, it, th what, what year was this you did this? 2014. So this was pre Jungle Scout and you know similar yeah. type of tools. So mm -hmm. you were just kind of guessing what the sales were, right? Yeah, it's pretty stupid in hindsight. Yep, <laughs> not something you would uh, recommend to people <laughs> these days. So, but at least you you sold through it. So did you stick with e-commerce there for a while. Yeah. So luckily, you know that product did do pretty well, and I was uh, that still sells you know, uh, today and then ended up getting into some other, uh, you know, dog related products to, that mm -hmm. complemented it and then spun off a baby brand as well. Cause some of the products, you know, were able to be modified for babies, believe it right. or not. And then, uh, Oh yeah. 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 Yep. So then after that, um, yeah, that, that was kind of, I kind of got into it, started having some, some fairly decent success. And then, mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And then one of my good friends from college, he launched a brand on Kickstarter selling sunglasses. And then they asked me for help. I was helping them and they said, can we just pay you to do it? And I said, uh, sure, I guess, you know, I'm happy to help, but mm -hmm. if you want to pay me, I'll, I'll definitely. <laughs> do yeah. I'm fair to play. And yeah, so that was my first like, you know, consulting or agency client, but I didn't have any business thing in mind. And then that's mm -hmm. how it kind of evolved. They, you know, they had some success. We helped them, you know, grow to six figures in that first year. Um, and then 
after that, uh, they referred a friend and then they referred a friend and then all of a sudden they had like four or five clients. And now I was having trouble managing multiple businesses. And so, yeah, at the end of the day, I just wanted to, I was feeling pretty stressed. So I wanted to focus on one and I, I liked the agency and helping other companies do that more. It was just more fun for me and my mm -hmm. strengths. And I didn't love dealing with China or dealing with suppliers and containers and shipments. And I wasn't great at that, but I was good at the marketing and the Amazon stuff. And so, um, yeah, I thought, you know, why not do that? So I, I sold the pet products company and the baby products brand and, and just sold out of that. And now I focus on turnkey completely. And, uh, we built a, a nice, nice, great, strong team. And, uh, we're helping a lot of, a lot of companies, you know, boost on Amazon. Awesome. Awesome. So you, the nice thing is when you have a situation like that, you get to see what works and what doesn't because, you know, you, you, you see people come in, I'm sure with different scenarios and things of that nature. So everyone always has like the, the question, what is the latest tactic, the latest hack, you know, what works, what doesn't work. So in your, um, in your experience, what you're seeing today, what, what works and maybe what doesn't work. And that could probably take us down quite a, a rabbit hole. Yeah. Yep. That's always the number one question. And uh, so, yeah, I would say, I mean, the first thing that anytime a company contacts us before we get into the, the advanced strategies or tactics or hacks, mm. like we, we, we really boil it down to looking at, do they have the foundational pieces in place? Mm -hmm. Do they have, you know, uh, everything that they need in order to have high converting page? If they don't have those basics or those fundamentals, Mm -hmm. No matter what strategy you're doing or how cool or how, you know, how new it is, like it's going to have limited success. So it, it will work a whole lot better if you focus on making sure you have the fundamentals first. So that's where we always start, whether it's a full service client or a coaching client, or anyone that we're just talking to, we check their pay, their product pages first and make sure that those are mm -hmm. really strongly optimized. And so okay. that's really like step number one is make sure that you have you know, um, all of your image slots filled out, you know, you've got not just plain images, but ideally you've got infographics. You've also got a plus content. Hopefully you're able to have a video made and have a video on your product page. Cause that can really differentiate you from the competition and sell your brand and your benefits and emotion so much better if you can have video on there. So if you qualify for video then, and you're not using it, that's like a huge area of opportunity. So we'll advise clients on that as well that that's where they should focus and get that ball rolling um and then having just really really great sales copy that matches your ideal customer matches your brand matches what differentiates you um and we'll study your competitors too and then compare it to yours to help make sure that you stand out so those are you know th those are really the if you have those in place like you will probably be successful and, and be able to really grow no, no matter whether you're you're using the latest strategy or not because that's just like basic marketing having a high quality product high quality customer service high quality sales copy and that's going to be kind of like step one before moving on to the advanced stuff but i'm still happy to talk about the, the other stuff but uh just wanted to make sure I, I highlight that first no that totally makes sense because sometimes we get too caught up in like what's the latest hack or whatever but really most things in business are foundational find the right customer someone who could use their product and show them the value of it so you know in this what what tips do you have for sales copy or pictures and we can maybe get into the video here in a moment because that's still i think something that a lot of people aren't using i'm not even using to the way i should um so with like sales copy and pictures like what recommendations do you have yeah, so that's a really good question. So on the images side, and you kind of almost want to, you know, put what's in the bullet points in the images if you can. And so, you know, you want to like demonstrate your product. And, and, you know, if you've got a product that has ingredients or a nutrition label, like obviously make sure that that's, you know, you know really crystal clear and large. Um, and then if you have, you, know, you want to highlight what are your like top two or three benefits in the images and then you know, have someone, a, a professional like graphic designer, like make a, a professional high quality infographic um, that, that, you know, has text overlaid over the image. So it really like pops, it really stands out and it just looks professional and really, you know, the customer would look at that and be like, wow, you know, that's exactly the problem that I'm trying to solve and it does it, you know? 
So it's, it's really just those basic things. And then down in the A plus content below the fold, that's another place where you can, you know, get even more creative because Amazon has even less restrictive guidelines down there. So you can really, mm -hmm. you know, put, um, you know, live models using the product or, you know, out, out hiking, if it's an outdoor, you know, uh, product or something like that. So, um, and then on the bullet point side, I mean, it's kind of the, the same thing, which is, well, I guess let me step back. So the priority of the bullet points, like that's one of the most read areas on your Amazon page, right? But besides your title. So make sure your title is super strong and, and readable and sells your product, but also has your top keywords in there. But if we go onto the bullet points, mm -hmm. make sure that your top three bullet points are really, really um, your, your strongest bullet point. So if you've got say a warranty or a satisfaction guarantee or money back, anything like that, I highly recommend putting that in one of the, being one of the top three bullets because not all five bullets are always displayed to the customer, depending on what device that they're on. So mm. really, really putting your most action packed, your most, you know, unique or standout bullets in, mm -hmm. in those top three bullet point spaces. Um, so yeah, so those are just some of the tips there. And, um, and then just, yeah, moving on to video. So have, have you, do you have any video up for your current products or no, no video at all quite yet? So I've been toying with it. So I've been toying with the, you know, what do I do? But I probably like a lot of people, I got a billion different priorities. And I know a lot of people will think about this way too. And it's like, when you're not a hundred percent sure you focus on what you are comfortable with. Uh -huh. And so video, it's like, do I hire a model for a video? Do I just do a bunch of like a slideshow, you know, with basically like, you know, kind of like you're talking about like infographics. So what would be the optimal videos to do? Yeah. So one, one line I like to say is that any video is better than no video. So like it doesn't okay. need to be perfect, right? Like any, any video will, will perform better and you can just keep it really simple, you know, with what you have. So if, if you're, you know, a newer seller and you don't have a big budget, then do something within your budget and within your time budget as well. If you don't have a ton of time to put towards it, then, you know, then maybe do more of like a slideshow type infographic, you know, a couple slides with text overlaid on it, like a PowerPoint presentation. I mean, it can literally be that simple if, if you want to just go, you know, throw something up there and then try it out and see how it affects your conversion rate. But I mean, in my opinion, you know, especially if you're selling on, you know, your own e-commerce website as well on Shopify or a website platform like that. And if you have social media or, you know, any sort of media that you're sharing with uh, customers, I mean, I really like to think about it that that video that you're making for Amazon, you should also, you can use that as a video asset for your website and for social media and for content and for selling and for sales videos, for ads. I mean, you can use it in so many different ways. And so that's why I do think it is worth if you have the budget and the time, it's worth putting, you know, um, you know, a full, you know, whatever, four or eight hours into really planning it out and, right. and get, getting a model and doing a shoot, you know, a four hour shoot or something like that. If you can, if you can afford that and do that, because, you know, I, I had a, one of my pet products um, that we had, I mean, we, we did a video for that. It did cost like four or $5,000. Uh, we did a one day shoot with a professional videographer he also edited the video and did that whole thing. Turned into a three-minute sales video. We used that video. That was the only video shoot we ever did. We use that still today. You know, three years later, we're still using that video. Um, that's I'm out of that business now, but I still see the video on their social media. They're using the same one. Oh, really? That's it's, awesome. It's still selling. I mean, they've sold over you know a million right. dollars of that product mainly just from that one video. And that video is on Amazon. It's on Shopify. It's in their ads. They can splice it up and make little 30 second clips of it. So I, I really am a big proponent of that. And, um, you know, and I think Amazon is starting to move more towards video as well. Like it's, th there are some platforms now that, that Amazon's coming out with for, for certain sellers where the, they're having video ads being displayed. And so that is coming down the pipeline will hopefully be available to all sellers um, very soon. Um, so it's just something good to, to get ahead of. I think it's definitely worth, it's an asset in your business that you can use in so many different ways. And so it's worth, you know, spending a grand or a few grand and a couple of days on, you know, cause you'll have it for years to come. Yeah. That's such a good point because we can repurpose things. We don't have to do it for just one thing. Now you could theoretically have a video that's on 
multiple products. So if you have 10 different products, you could use the same video, right? Just kind of promoting your brand or is it better to do a different video for each product? What would you recommend? Yeah. So that's another great point. So it's, yeah, let's say you have 10 SKUs under the same brand and you're on more of a budget. I mean, yeah, ideally you have one, one video for each product that really sells it and, you know, has the whole sales pitch around that product. Right. Um, but at, at a, but it's also, a great idea if you're more on a budget where at some point in the video you show all of your products like look at the quality of xyz brand you know mm. like we, we stand behind our products and you show all your products in that video um and so yeah it can do it's totally okay to just do a, a brand video that this is what you stand for as a brand here's all your products and you can upload that to amazon um as well if, if, you, if one of your products is in that video so that's another way to do it you make one video and you can use it for 10 products um, so that's a great cost effective way to start and then mm -hmm. once you have that video base i mean you can hire a video editor for you know 15 bucks an hour sometimes you know or, or oh yeah you can get them on fiverr pretty cheap or upwork yeah exactly and so you know once they have that base then you could just tell them hey i want you to spin that one brand video and mm -hmm put the first say 15 seconds i want you to insert the first 15 seconds to be a you know these two infographics on product number 1 so that it it is a product specific video and then it goes to the brand and he just does that for all 10 products and i mean that would literally cost you maybe like 2 or 300 bucks maybe to have 10 you know customized videos for each product it's really not that expensive or that time consuming for you if you just hire a, an affordable professional to do it Awesome. What kind of conversion um, increases do you see when people add video? We've seen big ones. It, it really depends as well, like how complex or how demonstrable your product is. So, okay. um, you know, we've got one client that is in the wine accessories market. When you look at, the, at his product, just in the photo, you can't exactly tell what it is. Like it looks like it's probably related to wine, but you're really not sure how to use it. It's sort of like a, patented cool product but uh -huh. you, you can't tell from the photos and you didn't have a video and so and that was one of the first things that we helped advise on and mm. so so he added a, a video that you know what just simply showed someone how to use it because you couldn't tell from the listing but then that that had a huge boost on his conversion i think it i can't recall exactly but you know it jumped from say like 10 percent up to like 14 or 15 percent so because that because that was an example where that product really needed a video to right. sell it right so if you're in that scenario it's absolutely worth investing in video now if you're selling say you know i don't know something that is very plain and simple what it is like a stapler or you know, right know, <laughs> they like kind of know but it could yeah. still help yeah it can still help for sure because you want to differentiate what's different about your product or your brand or your quality or something like that and it's just so much easier to communicate with that through video and, and really connect with the customer and sell the customer mm -hmm. as opposed to just a, a static image. Right. Well, that's a good point because, you know, when you think about it, if it's a, even if it's a commodity thing, like a stapler, you want to differentiate from other staplers. And even if you get a half percent bump in conversions over time, that adds up to a lot of sales. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. we forget about like, you know, little things can have big impacts over time. Yeah. No, I mean, that's, that's what we I mean, preach to our clients all the time. I mean, that's why like we recommend hiring a professional videographer to do video or hire mm -hmm. a professional PPC agency to do PPC. It's like if you hire the, the expert to do it like one time and clean it up and do it, if you can boost your sales on Amazon in a month or in a couple of months, well, typically your sales will now permanently be at that level or grow, grow right. from that level. So it's like this snowball compound effect. So if you, if you look, if you think long-term about the investment that you're putting towards say hiring, you know, a videographer or hiring a coach or something like, yes, it costs money in the short term, mm -hmm. you're going to hurt your margins temporarily. But if you can like learn the one or two or three things that can boost your sales to, you know, an extra five right. grand in a month, well, that's actually like an extra five grand times 12. That's 60 grand a year right there yeah. that you just made. Right. So something like that. Yeah, when you start thinking about it, like, oh, okay, maybe it's worth it to spend a little bit of money on the, the video or something like that. So, yeah, very, very good point. Now, so we've covered here, as you were talking about, the more foundational things. Now let's get into the, you know, what people debate in forums of what works and what doesn't as far as the latest tips and tricks. So 
now that we've got our foundations right, we've got, you know, good copy, good photos, video. So now that someone has all that in, what are the things that maybe people thought were working that aren't working or we can go to the direction of what is working that maybe people aren't really aware of. I'll let you kind of take it from there. Yeah, sure. So on the strategy side, so I mean, basically anytime that Amazon comes out with a new opportunity or strategy, typically the early adopters, the early movers are going to get the best benefit out of it mm. until everyone learns about it. And then it starts growing right. up. Right. So uh, lightning deals was sort of that example a few years ago when it first came out, mm -hmm. you know, it was free. There was no cost to it went by and we were just with clients selling like gang gangbusters, but then right. they started charging for it. And then now it's, it's, it's dried up a bit, but, mm -hmm. um, so it's a lot more difficult to do that in that traditional lightning deal. But, mm -hmm. um, recently Amazon's come out with a couple new types of deals. So one is the seven day deals. So, mm -hmm. um, that's kind of similar to lightning deals, but it's a seven day deal. Uh, it's more exclusive. It gets featured in the deals section. Um, and we've been testing with some clients and have seen significant bumps in sales. And so um, I, I do always, I'm a proponent of, you know, you should always try something once, uh, mm -hmm. you know, if you're, if you're not sure, like, oh, that's probably not going to work. Like, well, what's the, you know, cost benefit analysis of just trying it once? What if it does work? You can run that over and over if it does work. And if it doesn't work, well, maybe you lost a little bit of margin or the cost of that deal. So, uh, so that's something that worth trying if you haven't seen that yet. And then another similar one to that is called prime exclusive discounts. So that's mm -hmm. another type of deal that Amazon's come out with and it's only for prime, um, prime members only. And so um, we're running that as well. And again, like not as many people know about these opportunities. So it's mm -hmm. probably going to be the most effective to try it sooner rather than later right um you know and you know we are seeing it work for some clients and so uh, i think those are two that are definitely worth testing at this point okay so between those two what works like what would some, make a successful seven-day deal like is it a certain percentage that you would recommend or like wh what if someone had a portfolio of products would you recommend that they go after one that maybe is slower in sales or get a boost to one that's already successful yeah. I mean, it really depends. Like if you have a product that's got a good conversion rate and, and all, and you've got those pieces in place and you want to get a sales boost and move some inventory, that's a great reason to do it. Like if you've got excess inventory and you're about to be paying long-term storage fees, mm. you know, probably a good idea that it's worth, you know, selling it at 20% off, 30% off, whatever you need to do just to move through that inventory and get some cash flow back. So mm -hmm. sometimes you run deals for different purposes, right? Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of, it just kind of d depends, but you know, certainly your, your best sellers that have the best conversion rate, the most reviews, th those will typically perform the best on there. Um, mm -hmm. you know, so, uh, it, it's up to you what, what you want to do for what your goals are. But, uh, I, I would do one that's a, a pretty solid converting product or else it's not going to perform super well, probably. Okay. Does Amazon, and I haven't tried either of these yet. Now you've just made them on my to-do list, <laughs> uh, especially once we get past the holidays and cause you know, inevitably there's the things that sell more than I thought they were going to sell. And the other things it's like, oh, I'm just going to be sitting on a little bit more of this than I thought. So it's a good way to, to move through things. So between those two, like, are there minimum percentages that off that you have to do? Or is it basically Amazon just says, here's your minimum? Kind of like they do with lightning deals. Yeah. So I believe that Amazon has for each of those sort of their minimum requirements based on your, mm -hmm. your, your pricing and all that. So, you know, don't quote me, just do whatever, at least the minimum is <laughs> right. obviously, I, I think it's 20% okay. um, minimum, but you know, just, just double check what it is. If you can do a little bit higher, mm -hmm. you know, like maybe 25% or something like that, that might help you stand out from, you know, the competition if you can afford that in your margins. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's, uh, you know, if you're, if you're offering a 3% discount, you know, you're not going to get a ton of sales probably. So typically try to do at least 10 or 20% if possible. Well, typically too, when you think about it, like, you know, depending on what your margins would be for, for PPC, if you're not paying PPC, it could be better off, you know, especially if you are moving through something that you would just be sitting on or to your point, avoid long-term storage fees. Cause it's like, you know, now that they're on the year cycle, it's like every month I feel like I'm, I'm waiting like, okay, is it, am I going up or down in the number of <laughs> units that are going to get hit with that? So that, that's, that's a, that's a, that's a good strategy. 
So what else is working as far as uh, with Amazon? Yeah, so I mean, at the end of the day, all of those, you know, like those ones I just talked about, like those mm -hmm. are just sort of like tactics that are working right, right. now. And tactics will come and go. Um, you know, we were doing profitable Amazon giveaways for a while. That was great, but then they, they shut that down. So that's why it's important mm. to stay stay up to date on what Amazon is working with. And also you don't want your whole business to be reliant on one particular hack right. or tactic or strategy because it most likely will dry up and go away at some point. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's definitely, I think, a good idea to be testing out, you know, tactics and strategies. But at the end of the day, one of the things I think will probably always work in the long run is if you can be um, sending traffic from external off Amazon traffic, whether that's paid traffic, like, you know, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, paid media, Google ads, something like that. Or if you have your own audience off of Amazon, mm. so ho hopefully you have an email list that you've been accruing on your website or from your Shopify customers, or, um, you know, if you've been able to just accrue, a, a, you know, an audience on Facebook or Instagram or social media, you know, mm -hmm. that's an audience. And if you don't have an audience, you can try to connect with other people's audiences that are related to your mm -hmm. niche. So if you're in the, you know, sporting goods space selling exercise bands or exercise equipment, you know, there's a lot of uh, popular um, people on social media that, you know, that, that are in really good shape and post workout videos and they have, you know, millions of followers or hundreds of thousands. And sometimes you only need thousands of followers because they can be more loyal in those smaller numbers actually. And you can connect with those people. And if you can do that and get in front of them and start that relationship, send them free product, you know, connect with them. Um, so those are just a couple ideas to get, you know, an outside off Amazon audience, whether it's your own mm -hmm. or whether it's someone else's. And then once you have that audience and choose which one you're using, then find a way to send it to Amazon. That will always work. Amazon mm -hmm. loves that. It's part of the A9 algorithm that if you're sending external traffic, like Amazon's going to reward you for that as opposed to someone that never sends, you know, one person from off Amazon and they're only, you know, using uh, the on Amazon traffic, you know, you're going to get trounced eventually by someone that that is sending consistent traffic or at least occasional traffic from off Amazon sources that they love that and they're going to reward you for that. Um, and, uh, you know, that's, that's one of the, the ways that will always work, um, in my opinion. Nice. Now, one question I have with the off Amazon traffic is there's always been this debate, I feel like, of whether you should have a bridge page because like, are you hurting your conversions? Especially like if you just run ads straight to an Amazon page, especially on Facebook, if people aren't even in the mood for buying and they just click at it out of curiosity, is that hurting your conversions? Or is it the benefit of outside traffic is the more clicks you get over to your listing, the better, or do you want people that are at least motivated enough to put in their email address or, you know, sign up a messenger to get a coupon code and then go to your listing page, which do you think is optimal? Yeah, I think, unfortunately, the answer is it, it depends. So like, <laughs> right. if, it's if never you, as black and white as we want. Right. Yeah. It's not like one is bad and one is good. You know, it's like, if you have, say, a really warm email list, right? Mm. You've cultivated this relationship with your own customers, right? And, mm -hmm. and um, you know, if you say have 5,000 people, they've been on your list for over two years, you've been doing content, they've bought some products from you in the mm -hmm. past, and now you're going to launch this brand new product um, mm -hmm. on Amazon, and they're expecting it, you've already warmed them up. So in that example, you're still going to have a super high conversion rate, in my right. opinion, send them from your email list, right? Now, in another example is if you're say doing it from a colder traffic source, like say a Facebook ad, mm -hmm. um, you know, I would say it, it is better probably in that scenario to send it to a bridge page or a landing page or a squeeze mm -hmm. page, whatever, whatever you want to call it. So that way you have an opportunity to capture their info, like their email or um, get them onto your Facebook messenger, many chat list, something of that nature um, so that you can capture that info because they may not purchase right away. And another benefit to that, obviously, is 
if you can put enough info on that squeeze page about more info on what your product is, like, mm. hey, here's the product, here's the price, here's what it looks like, here's the benefits, um, you know, this is who it's for. Mm -hmm. And if they kind of have enough info on that squeeze page to make a buying decision, like, hmm, you know what? That's not what I thought it was. I don't, I don't need that. I thought it was something else. Then they won't click through to Amazon and, and hurt your conversion rate. But mm -hmm. only the people that click through are people that are like, oh yeah, that looks pretty good. I want to, I want to go, you know, buy it on Amazon. So now you're going to get a super high conversion rate um, in most cases if you send them through that squeeze page and you hopefully get to capture their info. So it's like a double bonus. So, you know, most of the time I would say if you can try to try to use that bridge page or, um, or what have you, but in some cases it, it is okay to send it direct to Amazon. Gotcha. So you do think that if you send it just the cold traffic, it could hurt you in the long run if you just go straight to cold traffic. Yeah. I mean, especially if it's like ice cold traffic, like if, <laughs> right. you're, if you're converting. never rates, heard of you, nothing. Yeah. Yet. Yeah. I mean, if your conversion rate's literally going to be like 0.1%, you know, if you send a thousand people there and one person buys, you know, that yeah, problem, that, yeah, that's, that's going to hurt you a lot more than help you. Um, and so that's where it would have been nice to send those thousand people to your squeeze page. Mm. And hopefully that one person, <laughs> if it was, you know, maybe 10 people out of that were like, Oh, I like that. And they go to Amazon and then you get five purchases. So now you have a 50% right. conversion rate. So, um, yeah, it, it depends, but, uh, you know, do, do what you can with it. Okay. Good deal. Now, do you think there's any myths out there of like, Oh, people say this works, but you're finding it doesn't work or maybe it used to work and it doesn't anymore. Anything that you would warn people against? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, yeah. I mean, I guess a myth is that I, I think that the days are, are sort of over where you can just throw up a product because you saw that it had super high, potential sales, you know, mm -hmm. on, on jungle scout or whatever app you're using. And you're like, okay, I'm just going to get in that niche because it's hot. You just throw it up right. and send a bunch of inventory to Amazon and expect to, you know, that you'll just rank and, and, you know, you do maybe a couple of actions and set it and forget it. And you're going to be a millionaire mm -hmm. for the next three years. And, right. you know, that, that those days, if they were ever there, maybe they were kind of there in 2014 or, or so. Right, you could get puppy pee pads and throw right. them up there. <laughs> yeah, that was when they could be real dumb and still <laughs> still make some money and make some bad choices and you'd, you'd be all right. But unfortunately, if I had done that today, I think I would I, I may not have, have made it through. And so I think mm -hmm. you just need to, if you are in this business and want to do it, like you just have to think long term you have to treat it like a real business mm -hmm. you have to treat your customers like gold and really try to build up you know a mm -hmm. customer list build up a brand and i think that's what will help you survive in the e-commerce marketplace for the next five ten plus years um you know that, that's just my opinion you know we, we see a lot of different companies come to us and we can mm -hmm. very quickly tell sort of which ones we think are gonna make it and which ones are sort of yeah just kind of entrepreneurs and you know think that they right, then they're in not, do, not do hardly any work and they're going to make a bunch of money. So, okay. Well, good deal. Well, as, as we wrap this up, you, 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 I think open the door to another question and I think it's more the mindset. So, you know, more from the mindset of like you, you deal with different types of folks who are, you know, maybe the more entrepreneurial type and the entrepreneurs. Um, and sometimes people that are entrepreneurs think that they're entrepreneurs and they beat themselves up and the, the entrepreneurs think that they are entrepreneurs, but wh what, what is the successful common thread you find in a lot of the sellers who are successful entrepreneurs? Yeah, I would say, I guess in talking with hundreds of companies, like we can pretty quickly tell, like if the owner seems really competent and they're, you know, and they basically are just they have a good head on their shoulders. Like they, you know, they, they treat it like a business. They're mm -hmm. thinking long term, and they'll do whatever it takes to win. Like they're not going to give up. They're not just like, okay, I'm going to try one more thing. And if it doesn't work, I'm going to give up. Like they, mm -hmm. they don't operate from that mindset. They're like, Oh no, like this is what I'm doing. And like, it's going to be successful. And if this fails or this doesn't work, or if you guys can't help us, like we're still going to be, successful no matter what we'll just pivot and find a way to get it done so at the end of the day it's like if you just don't quit and you put in the work like you will be successful uh, pretty much every time i would say i love it i love it that's great that's great so that's uh that's fantastic so if anyone wanted to follow you online or just learn more about you or 
um, what you've got going on out in the uh, e-commerce world, where would they go to check you out? Yeah. So if you obviously like podcasts like Kevin's, we also have a podcast called the playbook for Amazon podcast. And pretty soon here, we're going to have a really big name guest. His name is Kevin and we're going to pick his brain. <laughs> and so make sure that you check out that episode because we're going to learn a lot probably about international selling on Amazon. So uh, nice. definitely check out the podcast. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're selling on Amazon as one of your sales channels and you're in the mindset where you're ready to grow and you want to take it to the next level and do that quickly, that's what my company does. And so you can head over to turnkeyproductmanagement.com We've got some amazing free resources there. You can also learn about what services we do. We do full service done for you management or we can do it for you. That's for you know, a little bit larger companies um, mm -hmm. that have those foundational pieces in place. But we also have really, really great coaches and coaching programs that can help get you to that level really quickly and really cost effectively. And so, um, yeah, just head over there and you know, just tell them that you came from Kevin's podcast and we can even do a free a uh, strategy session with you where we kind of help audit your business and help, you know, look at your listing and point out some of those things that oh, nice. you know, might help your business. And, uh, you know, we love talking with businesses. If we can help you, we'll let you know how we help. But sometimes we can't. We say, you know what, you really need a video first or you need this and we'll, we'll give you that advice. And then we say, come back when you've done that. So, um, yeah, just head over to turnkeyproductmanagement.com. Awesome. Awesome. Well, appreciate this. Uh, this has been a, a great conversation and, uh, I definitely suggest people go out and check out your podcast. All right. Thank you, Kevin. Really appreciate it. And best of luck to everyone out there. Thanks for listening. Thanks.